So wait a second, wait a second. So you didn't decide that you wanted to play soccer until you were in college playing soccer. Yeah, sophomore year. Wait, how does that happen? Because like, hold on, time out. <laughs> I thought you're supposed to have this perfect plan. Like by 16, junior year, you know your top five schools, you know where you're going, you know your future. Not a clue. The zombie apocalypse. <laughs> What is up guys, Macklin Robinson here and I am an American professional goalkeeper. Had to give a bit of an editor's note. First wanted to say thank you so much for the support on the past three videos I've posted. Gotten over 5,000 views just in the past three weeks alone. So thank you so much. Your support helps me create content and grow the channel, making more stuff that you guys like to see. Speaking of which, this video I made is actually a result of the first video I did reacting to the modern goalkeeping. A lot of the comments included discussion about, hey, you know, modern goalkeeper is just trying to help the next generation go pro. And why would you sit here criticizing him when he just is trying to help us with some technique, show us some new cool stuff that we can't quite do yet. If you wanna check out why I think some of his drills are particularly dangerous and the evidence thereof, go ahead and check out my video on the modern goalkeeping and my reaction. I don't wanna leave anyone without solutions to their problems. A lot of people want to learn how to go pro, how to get to that next level and everybody's journey is different. So I thought it would be great to share at least my journey from my perspective to see what it took me to get to that professional level. Now, for those of you who don't know, quickly, my name is Macklin Robinson. I'm a professional goalkeeper for the Tampa Bay Rowdies of the USL Championship. We made it to the USL Championship Finals. It was unfortunately canceled by COVID. However, I've had the privilege to play against all the way to the highest level, the English Premier League, down to the very, very bottom of rec soccer. I was able to break through to the professional ranks through multiple injuries and no connections, little to no connections, and really live my dream. So this is that story. It was done on a podcast about a year ago. It was done by Amanda Forrester of Richmond Goalkeeping. Thank you so much for recording this. Check her out and her page. I'll link it in the description down below. So that's enough for me. Enjoy the video. Thanks, guys. You know, I just wanted you to tell us your story. Like, where did you where did you grow up? Where are you from? And what was your journey into, you know, becoming a pro uh, goalkeeper in the USL? I started out. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, not a huge soccer town. It wasn't at the time. It is now. Thank goodness. FC Cincinnati. We've rolled in and people have kind of gotten on the hype train, which is great. I like to think I'm a little bit responsible for that. But, you know. but yeah, so, so we, seed, right? yeah, <laughs> maybe in the mind, somewhere in the subconscious. But um, yeah, so I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Both my parents, they were college athletes, but they didn't they didn't know a lot about soccer in that world. And especially being an American back in what the 90s when I grew up, um, you know, like soccer was taking a foothold, but it's not it's not where it is today. We didn't have. The academy system, the huge sponsorships and monies that are in the MLS and in, even in the lower leagues in the USL, like where I'm playing now, it's it's completely night and day from where I grew up. You know, like I said, I came from Cincinnati. I, I went, I played high school soccer. I wasn't a part of the academy system, so I didn't have a lot of coaches' eyes on me. I remember it wasn't until I, I was 16 or 17 years old when I had really actually even started. Okay, I'm going to be a goalkeeper. Like yeah. this is actually what I want to do. I was I was playing in the midfield. I was playing striker. I was playing. That's super late. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. it was one of those things where it was I enjoyed playing in the field and and I enjoyed playing in the goal. I just like soccer, and, and if that's kind of telltale, I I wasn't I don't want to say as into it, but I didn't really decide that I wanted to play soccer until I was 19 years old. I wanted to you know go on and do other things, and, and I wanted to go to med school. You know, I got my, my degree in biology. That was the path I was going to to go down. So wait a second, wait a second. So you didn't decide that you wanted to play soccer until you were in college, playing soccer. Yeah, sophomore year. Wait, how does that happen? Because <laughs> like, hold on, time out. <laughs> I thought you're supposed to have this perfect plan. Like by 16, junior year, you know your top five schools, you know where you're going, you know your future. Not a clue. I had previously, just going off college, I had committed, verbally committed to the University of Cincinnati and then redacted that and sign with a division two school a week later just because i didn't really know where i wanted to go and what i wanted to do and what was the best fit but that's kind of where it ties into what you were talking about earlier um i met someone 
and he showed me that, hey, you know, this life that I live right now, you know, is, is something that you can attain. And I took that full force. I said I was 19 years old and I was like, I, I literally transferred three weeks after that decision and went to DePaul, played Division One Big East soccer, and I mean, the rest is history. Who was that person? Matt Lampson is actually the guy that kind of took me under his wing. He was the starter for Columbus Crew uh, wow. at the time when I was in Columbus playing in Ohio. And just through some happenstance, he ended up training our goalkeeper court at Ohio Dominican. And through and through that process, I was invited to first team training, and he talked to me as a friend. You know, it was, we were buddies. You no, know, we were we were teammates, and, and I basically realized, hey, I went out to this training. <laughs> I looked around at these other goalkeepers, and I looked at Matt, and I looked at the guys playing. And I said, heck, I can do this. Like, I'm not that far off. I wasn't there yet, but like I was, I could see myself, and I was like, you know, if I can, yeah, if I can do the same things that he's done. The same things that he showed me, which are very simple, you know, it's repetitive. You do something over and over again, you're going to get it. Um, I was like, you know, I can do that. Decide, I told my parents, I'm like, I'm going to transfer. I want to play soccer. They they were like, This was all your, all your freshman year? Sophomore year. Sophomore, Sophomore year. year, So you yeah. went two years before you made this connection? Yeah, because I, I had a scholarship at Ohio Dominican uh, University, and I actually gave that up to go to DePaul and play soccer. So were you a walk-on? Yeah, I was I was bit, I was recruited, so I sent out videos from my highlights, so we did I, we did well, you know, that helped a lot. Uh, sure. at my old school at Ohio Dominican, we made our first NCAA appearance, and so I got a bunch of good videos from that. And I sent it out to I think it was like the University of Wisconsin and DePaul and some other some other places and DePaul just worked out. I think the the coach at the time was my he went to my high school actually. Wow. So, you know, the soccer world, that's that's part of it is learning how to network and make connections. And that was kind of my first taste. You know, that's what you got to do in the professional environment is you got to you got to kind of take hold of that and figure out any way possible to get there. You know, so that's that's what I did. And it was eye opening. You know, it was it was something that's that's really cool. I mean, that's not the average story that you hear. Matter of fact, I don't think I've ever met an athlete with a story where they did not know that they wanted to play pro. Maybe like when they were 16, they said, okay, I'm gonna make the decision. But 19, that's that's really late. So. Yeah, and I mean, you know, a lot of people can take that as, or a lot of people took that and I got a lot of stick for it. Like I said, even my parents were like, hey, what are you doing? You know, you have this scholarship, you're on track to get your degree early and do all this stuff. Like, what are you doing? You're taking a chance to go on this team that you might not even play and accrue all this debt to do whatever, you, you know, you might not get a scholarship. But I didn't care. I didn't care. Because I saw in this person that gave me this vision, you know, I saw it, the possibility of me doing that, and I recognized that I was not going to accept anything else besides that, and so that's what I did. That's so cool. I mean, it takes a tremendous amount of faith, but anything in pursuing our goals is, is going to take faith. As an underdog, you almost have to have that unshakable belief in yourself that no matter what crap is thrown your way no matter what you have to deal with you are going to overcome it because at the end of the day i've i've gotten to that level you know i've played against premier league teams i've played against the best of the best like it's you start to realize that these people aren't any better than you are no, yeah. not in this they're not 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 any better but do they're we all not put on our underwear the same way Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we do <laughs> you would be surprised some of the biggest personalities you've ever seen are actually some of the most insecure you have to be so confident in yourself to handle that environment, you know, a lot of people's character fades and fails them in that, and you don't have a good career. So that's what I'm focused on right now. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you had talent, obviously, yeah. or you wouldn't have made it as far as yeah, you did. Yeah. But it sounds like character sustains you. Absolutely. Why? So I want to touch on how you made it into the pros in just a moment, but I really want to touch on this because I think this is a good point because so many people with social media, in my opinion, Look at social media and go, that's how we should act. Like, we're all insecure personalities. Um, maybe we don't know they're insecure until we get around them and spend a few hours with them, or maybe just a few minutes. Yeah. Depends on the person. In today's but, day and age, you never know. I mean, people can frame things however you want. You never know yeah. until you talk to somebody, you spend time with them, you get to know them. Well, let me ask you this. In college, in high school, why did you choose character over popularity? My dad. Tell me about that. He was, um, he was in the military. Both my parents were in ROTC, so I was raised by two parents that had that conviction and that 
you know, he, they always encouraged me and told me that I could do anything that I wanted as long as, you know, that's really what I wanted to do. And I mean, shoot, I can remember that since I was three years old and I, I still abide by that today, you know? Yeah. If, if I work hard enough and I, you know, put the effort in and I'm smart enough and I outcompete others and I, I, I have the character and the principles that can continue me down that road because I recognized it wasn't a quick path. It, it was a 10 year process instead of a, you know, it's going to happen in a couple of weeks. So I knew the only way that I could basically combat myself was to garner these characters and principles that would then take me down that path of whatever it is that I wanted to do. That's so good. I think every young athlete, college athlete, pro athlete, they need to, they need to hear that. And me included, I've had to catch myself and remind myself not to appeal and chase what's popular or what's cool and that even though it's hard and unpopular to go against the grain, it's better to do what's right. It's often what makes you stand out. Yeah. I, think. I brought up Matt Lampson was the guy who kind of, you know, inspired me. For those of you who don't know who Matt Lampson is, he plays for LA Galaxy right now. And he actually suffered from Hodgkin's lymphoma, I believe. Oh, wow. Um, before he even went to college. Um, had oh, had a Division One scholarship. And sorry, Matt, if I'm pushing this a little bit, I'm trying to, trying to paraphrase, but was signed with, I believe, a team in Illinois, a, a college, a Division One college, ended up developing you know, cancer, and uh, I think he had it for two or three years, beat it, um, and then ended up, he, he was he went to Columbus, Ohio State, and just ended up walking onto the team. The coaching staff was like, hey, you know, they had five goalkeepers at the time, they're like, hey, you know, we got a spot for you, you know, you're good, you were a good goalkeeper, yeah. we can, within a year, he was starting. And uh, he was picked up in the draft by the Columbus crew. And then his, his rookie season in the MLS, the starter, Andy Grunbaum, got hurt. And he played the entire the entire year. Which, wow. To me, was insane. I mean, I remember going to those games. We had to work security at the time to, to go to the, That was part of our, like, raising money for college. Like... So I'm at the security, you know, in my yellow shirt. And I'm yeah. watching Matt out on the field in front of, you know, 25,000 people. And I'm like, I just trained with that guy yesterday. This guy's done so many things that, like, I don't think I could do that. I remember it stuck out to me. He told me, you know, he gave me, like, three or four drills. And he's like, if you do these drills more than anybody else, he's like, I guarantee you, you'll be, you'll be better than them. He's like, it just makes sense. Wow. So that's what, that's what happened. I, I would never be where I'm at without those individuals in my life. And so I'm trying to do that for the other little Mac out there that, you know, doesn't have the opportunities and basically needs to fight tooth and nail to break into the soccer world. So speaking of tooth and nail fighting, I remember you telling me your journey to pro and it, and it wasn't easy. You almost didn't end up at Tampa Bay because it was an injury, right? Yeah. A couple injuries. Actually. Couple, yeah. couple. Okay. Tell me, so you tore your ACL in college? February before my senior year in college. Pretty going into a pretty important year. Yeah, which my, yeah. You missed, most important year. Missed the next season, I imagine, right? No, I actually managed to come back and play. I think I was exactly, the trainer said, six and a half months post-op when I played my first game. Wow. Well, it it is wow because it was wowly stu stupid. Um, <laughs> It's not stupid because I wouldn't be playing professional soccer today, but it was, and that's what I talk about, just having this basically unyielding desire to just do whatever it is that you want to do, because I didn't give a shit, give a crap, if this was, it was going to tear my knee in half. I was going to get back on the field and I was going to do this. I worked with my trainers and I was smart, you know, whatever, yeah. but that experience in itself, working so hard, I literally just sat in the gym for six months and just worked out. And then senior year rolled around and I was supposed to go into the draft, blah, 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 but then after I tore my, my ACL, no go. You know, I, I ended up playing. I had a very, fairly decent senior year. It wasn't anything to write home about, but I did, did very well. We made it to the Big East tournament for like the first time in seven years or something. And then that was it. I didn't have any other options. Um, I wanted to play. I kind of had some interest from San Jose Earthquakes, but they were, and I got a call from just a friend, same thing, networking. He uh, was the goalkeeper trainer for the Chicago Fire, and he was putting on a pay-to-play combine in Florida, actually, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I told my mom, I was like, hey, you know, this is an opportunity. There's going to be some professional coaches there. I might, might get a shot. 
And I went down there. There was like 300 something goalkeepers. And, Holy uh, cow! 300. Yeah, it was a lot. It was, it was a lot. Um, That's a lot of competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I ended up playing, and and uh, I made it to like the All Star game or something like that. And nice. I ended up like saving the penalty and, and doing really well. I mean, I was approached afterwards again by San Jose and also. Carolina Railhawks at the time, the head coach, Colin Clark. And that's in Raleigh, North Carolina. That's in Raleigh, North now Carolina. Now North Carolina FC, right? Now it is rebranded as North Carolina FC and also houses North Carolina Courage. Yep. So I uh, talked to him and he said, hey, you know, we like you, we're interested. Come on down, do preseason with us, like we'll, we'll sign you. I hadn't finished my, you know, my degree yet. And it was very important for my parents to, to, to get that degree. And, and for me, with everything that I'd been through, you know, I'd, it felt like I needed to do it, and I, I had the credits in order that I could uh, finish. Um, it was three months early, so I did that just in the hopes that there would still be a, an opportunity in, in wait, and there was. I, I went to Carolina and, uh, you know, did well, signed signed for two years and, and played there, and it was an awesome experience, and then, you know, more stuff hits the fan. You know, I did I did really well and had a lot of good contract opportunities, and then a third of the jobs in the American professional soccer market collapsed with the NSL. Um, so then that was another step back and had to then venture to the New York Cosmos where I picked up another injury. It's come to a point where it's such a part of the process to basically pick yourself back up again that it's not That's even good. a question. You know, I mean, look where I'm sitting now. I've had another great year and I they just extended my option again for next year as well and I'm really excited to be here. So with all the injuries that came of it, I mean, it's it's only been that attitude of grit and resilience and sticking by my character that's kept me going and where I am right now. You know, I, mean, I, I like to believe this is probably the best club in the USL, the best second division club in the oh, yeah. country, and uh, you know, we've got a great fan base and, and it's it's amazing. I love you saw the facilities earlier; oh, they're, they're awesome, top notch, top fantastic. Notch. They literally um, thought of everything. I mean. Yes. What got me was the weight room. Every yes. like cable weight, <laughs> it was all color rowdies. coded and color- had the rowdies oh. on it. Yeah, it's the sticking to that character and the, those those methodologies, those those things that have gotten me here. And if I continue to to reinforce those behaviors, just tack down those those ideologies, who knows where I can be? Yeah, it's so true. I love how you touched on. It's just, I'm getting used to the process. Yeah. It's so, it's a part of the process, it's normal. And I think so many of us, when adversity hits, me included, it's easy to slip in this mindset of, something's not right, this is not normal. Oh my God, oh my gosh. And, and, and it, it almost becomes a distraction. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. done that multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's part of the process. Yeah. Because if you think of every injury that you've had, every cut, because you became a free agent for a while, right? Okay, yeah, so when you became a free months. agent, yeah. Um, even showing up to the combine that you had to pay for, you had to pay to fly, pay to stay in a hotel, yeah. pay, pay to just get yeah, to my, try out. My mom went down there and stayed in the hotel with me. It was fun. Yeah. It was, yeah it was. So all these things happen. Looking back, hindsight 2020, did you learn something from everything that got you to where you are now? Yeah, absolutely. What are two things that you learned from the series of events that you told us today? Oh that Lord, have changed your life. Just two things. Th- things that stick out. Yeah, two things. Things from that the stick process, out. from trusting the process. I think one of them, and this one's kind of personal to me. I got into this late, so I almost lacked an identity in the sense that I didn't like. I didn't know that I wanted to do this. Like, okay, the goalkeeper that I played with here is John McCarthy, and you know he's played the MLS, Philadelphia Union, U.S. Men's National Team. I was watching him on YouTube back in Cincinnati in my house. You know, sorry, phone call. <laughs> sorry. You know, I was watching him on YouTube in my house playing, you know, New York Red Bull Arena, and lo and behold, now we're teammates and we're, we're rivals. And I think I decided I wanted to be my own goalkeeper and mm. kind of do things my own way instead of looking at him or the Tim Howards or the David De Gea's, yes, I picked up certain things, certain techniques, certain mannerisms, whatever, but it's more important and more beneficial for me to be myself, play to my strengths, play to my weaknesses. Even. Um, so that's one. That's good. 
don't compare yourself. Yeah, and you know, it's hard when you're in this environment. I mean, that's what you're doing is you're yes. comparing yourself every single day. Was I better than this person? Did yeah. I have a better? You bring so many different qualities that you may not even know about, but you, in order to bring about those qualities, you have to indulge in yourself. Yeah. You have to, okay, what can I bring to the table that nobody else can? Well, why would you spend the whole time trying to mimic what somebody else can do really well when that's what they're doing instead of developing your own kind of unique style that works for you? So that was yeah. one. Because I, I, I developed a lot of different styles over the years and I've kind of, I've really settled into one that I think works for me. So that's that's one. Two is, I, you know, I think this is a little redundant, but two is just the character thing. You know, the more and more and more I'm in this environment, the higher and higher I go, you know, I want to go to the highest level possible. The guys that are at the highest level, you know, the Christian Pulisics and the Tammy Abrams, you know, the guys playing the Premier League and the, in La Liga. The thing that separates them isn't necessarily the talent or, yeah, they're, you know, they've got somewhere. It's the fact that they spend their whole lives and every day trying to make themselves into a better human being because they recognize that that allows them to adjust at these high pressure jobs and scenarios. Yeah. To put myself in their shoes, you know, that's hard and I would have to make a lot of adjustments. So for me, it's commendable and they are of much sounder mind in the sense that they have habits and character that will keep them basically doing the same thing at a high level all the time Yeah. that will make them millions of dollars and keep them scoring goals. And, yeah, it's, you, it's your ability to adapt. Thanks for checking out my video. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the videos, go ahead and check out the other videos. I've got a lot of different content, reactions, as well as some home goalkeeping drills, highlights of my own from my professional career. Once again, I really appreciate the support you guys have given me over the past three weeks. It's really motivated me to keep pushing out content for you guys. So leave a comment on what you'd like to see in the future. I'm planning on doing a futsal goalkeeping reaction for my next video. That was the top recommendation from one of my subscribers, so we're definitely gonna check it out. I'll be posting videos weekly, so go ahead and check me out.